God body is simple. It means you see God when you look in the mirror and that the body of man is God and that there's no mystery God in the sky. You are God. Yep. What's happening is Mark Jenkins. Welcome to the Anabolic Mind Show, where we talk about people who are living the wellness lifestyle, who, uh, who help people as an occupation, who have some particular insight to give to you to help your wellness. And uh, we have one person today that encompasses all of that in one. Yeah. It's actually been through some, some real life experiences who can give you some insight and uh, who helps people uh, even before his super experience that we're going to talk about right now and uh, who's helping people uh, after. So uh, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome you to the Anabolic Mind, Aryan Urkel. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me in your show. All yeah, the way from the Netherlands. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, we had dinner. We had dinner last week, man. It was also awesome. it, it was good to see you in person. It had been a minute. Yeah, that was cool. And I had initially met you at the uh, Mindset Flix event maybe six months prior to that in um, Amsterdam, where everyone was sharing their story about empowerment and life lessons that they learned along the way. And uh, it was so crazy to me because to me, I had like the most uninteresting story out of everybody who was there. Everybody had a better story, guys, who was much more interesting, went through much more real shit. So it was really an honor for me to be there. And then you and I connected there. I think we had uh, some drinks afterwards. Yeah. And, and then, then you I, came I to LA. LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you came to LA and we connected and then we reconnected once again last week in um, Rotterdam. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So it that was cool that. also because you, you I, I was going to town with my, yeah, with, with, with my uh, oldest one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I thought, hey, isn't that Mark? Jenkins sitting there, and I thought, nah, he would have called me if he would, would be back in the Netherlands. And then two minutes later, you add me, like, hey, guy, I'm around in town. And then I took my scooter, turned around, and then I showed up, and you didn't even hey, know that. Right there. Yeah, this was crazy, guys. I was thinking about him. I was at this cafe, and you popped into my head, and I said, oh, shit, I didn't hit AE. Let me hit him, man, since I've been in Rotterdam. So I hit you, like, yo, let's get together. Let's have dinner. I'm in town. Two minutes later, you come down a scooter on a random street, stop right in front of the cafe that I'm having coffee with, uh, yeah. coffee at. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. What a, what a coincidence. Like, a coincidence. There's no such thing as a coincidence, right? On that level. Yeah. It's crazy. That's crazy. What are, the, what are the odds of that? But let's get into, let's get into your story, man, because it, it, it's, really, it's really incredible. I think people are going to be shocked uh, and inspired. But before we get into that, let's talk about uh, anthropology. So uh, you were anthropologist before your, your life-changing event happened. What was your what was your day-to-day -day life like as an anthropologist? Yeah, I was working, uh, I've, I've been working in Sierra Leone, I've been working in Tajikistan, all kind of countries that I would never come to if, if I was just a tourist. And I was working with a medical health organization, Doctors Without Borders, helping refugees to get a new life again. So I used anthropology, how, how to build uh, refugee camps, how social structures should be reinvented, how people should be connected with each other, how people from different tribes should try to, to work together and how they could make new yeah, important places because all their yeah, important places, they, they had to leave and they had to, to live in a new place. And, and yeah, I used anthropology also for uh, creating new, new assisting methods for, for our organization. So it was cool learning their culture and how culture could be connecting people to each other. So you were already living a wellness inspired life. Yeah, because wellness is not just uh, creating a good time for your body, but it's also about your mindset. And, and right. I, but, but I've been, uh, yeah, I've done boxing before I played football. Uh, I did some Taekwondo. So yeah, I, I, I've done my part and I, I yeah, yeah but as far as the uh, environmental wellness and, and and caring about your environment, you are you are already doing that occupational yeah, wise. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. yeah, that, that's awesome, and I think that's um that's so relevant right now because people uh for example, uh, getting to the airport, getting into uh, Rotterdam, you know, I had to wait an hour to get my bags, an hour and a half, and I was like, yo, what's going on? And they were like, after the pandemic, people had better quality of life, not working, they never came back to these jobs. 
No, true. You know, <laughs> so it's like it's very important to find fulfillment occupation your work. Yeah, definitely, and definitely. So much time working. So I think that's very relevant. But okay, well, fast forward to that. Let's talk about what happened to you uh, uh, as you were out there with Doctors Without Borders and what, what your life changing experience was. Yeah, my, my life ex life changing experience was I, I was kidnapped, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was in Russia, in Chechnya, uh, in Dagestan, which is part of the Northern Caucasus. It's a tough region in, in, in Russia. All the big fighters come from Dagestan and like uh, uh, Habib uh, Nurmagomedov. Yeah, yeah. So, my, no little guy. How's my yeah the other dude too, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Pakistan. So we were working there in uh, after the civil war in Chechnya in 2002, and then they they stopped my car. I was in the car, and and and, and they kidnapped me. They beat me up for, for two minutes. Uh, they, they pointed guns at me. I had to get out of the car. I thought I will surrender. I, I moved forwards to them, and then they started beating me up. I thought they were killing me. Then they dragged me in the car, put a gun on my head here, a gun on my chest, and then they drove me off. Uh, and they kept me for 20 months. I, they, I was kidnapped for 20 months. That was the, the short version. 20 months. 20 months. What's that? 600 and how many days? 607. So Seven. 607 days, they took away my freedom. They took away my secured life. I, I was, yeah, I could be killed every day. Uh, I couldn't. Go to the toilet without people standing without but behind me. Uh, I couldn't choose my food. Um, yeah, I didn't see faces eh, because they were wearing their masks. So it was a horrible time. But yeah, a man has to be a man sometimes, uh, and and you have to stand up and fight and 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 try to create. So, so yeah. for like two years, you sucked it up, more or less. What, 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 what does it mean? Suck, sucked it up. Uh, endured yeah endured yeah no I cried a lot in the beginning and, and I yeah. didn't know how to how to behave and I was searching to yeah to a new status quo so to, that, that life could be stable but I, I managed at the end I, I uh, it took three weeks before I, I started to accept that this is my new life I have to start building on it I have to make the best out of it and I have to learn to reinvent myself uh, I should look up the powers from within and how I could deal with it uh, to make connections with the guys to make connections with the powers I didn't realize I have I had to be uh, patient I had, had to have endurance discipline I had to stand up for myself I really had to fight once I had to yeah we were boxing one day um, I was threatened to be killed I had an ultimatum video I missed my mother I missed my girlfriend I, I I missed everything, but yeah, at the end, I, I survived and, and came out alive and came out sane, and I'm still around. Right. So let, let me ask you a question: Is that when you hear people, when you hear people sob stories, right? Like, oh shit, this happened to me. Aryan, I can't believe this happened to me, right? And and you and you hear it, like, what? Are you less empathetic now? Or are you like, come on, man? Like, what? Because based on what happened to you. You know, like mm -hmm. that's, that's like the most extreme of circumstances you can imagine. That's something out of a movie. Does no, did your, did your experience make you more empathetic or did it like how do you counsel people now? Is it more tough love because of your experience or you or, or are you now more? Let's talk. No, about I think it. I'm a bit more empathetic because everyone has this pain and and it's uncertainties and their misery. But of course, you shouldn't compare it to each other. And for example, if, if a small girl loses their pet, uh, it can also hurt. Uh, and, and maybe for me it hurts when I'm kidnapped, but for everyone has a different level. The only thing what, which changes is that I tell them, don't, don't be a victim uh, for a long time. You can be sad, you can feel pain, you can feel miserable, you can have self-pity for a few moments, but then again, raise up, stand up for yourself and try to look into the future for a better life. Don't let the past ruin your life don't let one event ruin your life because there's plenty of other things you can yeah put on top of it and and yeah and then they listen to me and they say who, who are you to tell me these kind of things and then i i, I come with my story right right, <laughs> yeah, right. Then I, beat them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think your story is fantastic because it puts a lot in perspective for people because a lot of people are at, at this moment right now uh uncertain yeah, you know, economically, there's a lot of uncertainty. 
There's a lot of uncertainty with the pandemic. Should I get vaccinated? Shouldn't I get vaccinated? There's a lot of uncertainty. And uh, I think you people miss that uncertainty is part of life and you, it's part of the True. adaptation process. And, and you have to almost embrace it uh, to a certain extent to be able to thrive. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be looking for stasis in life. You know, things are going to be in flux and you have to adapt. Yeah, true. Because negative, negativity is part of life. Uh, it's not always summertime. It's not always a wonderful time. And if you can deal with, with the, yeah, the, the evil parts of life, uh, then you can deal with life because you're not going to escape this. But somehow we're raising our children, uh, raising ourselves that, that to always be perfect and we should always be happy. And that's why I think we can deal with, with uncertainty. We, we can deal with misery as before. Um, and then we are getting a bit soft, I think. And, and that's why it's it's good to have examples of people who can deal with suffering and who can right. stand up and who can deal with it. But you also need to fight sometimes. Uh, maybe maybe not literally, but, but you have to stand up. You have to, to, to look around. What are the possibilities? Because there's always possibilities around. But of course, I, I, I had a good life before. And I thought, yeah, I want it back. Yeah, I want to, to see my parents again. I, I had my own pride i had my honor so you also need to know and find out these kind of feelings and because if you don't have pride or or honor then yeah you don't want to win it, i think it's also really important that sometimes you want to win from from the evil in life and uh, that you overcome yeah the, the bad yeah. parts of life yeah I, I mean you know even when i'm training clients a lot of times you know i have to play that uh villain in order to bring that out of them mm -hmm. To get that yeah. fight or flight or pride, or I'm not gonna let him break me, or I'm gonna finish this set. Fuck Mark. <laughs> yeah, no, true. <laughs> you know what I mean to, to bring that out in them, and, and a lot of times they think I'm just being mean or being sadistic, just to get them to feel the pain. But after they go through it, they're like, "Wow, you know, I yeah. realized something about myself." And, and and that self realization, I think people rarely have because they avoid. It's such a pain avoidant society. You true, know, true. But, but if, if you're curious about your own powers, you, you should surprise yourself. You should surpass yeah, your borders. And of course, everyone, every guru says yeah, you have to uh, yeah, develop yourself. You have to get out of your comfort zone. But, but like you said, it's still difficult to do that yeah, because we fear the pain. We don't know what it's bringing us. Uh, but yeah, sometimes just do it uh, and don't wait for yourself to be kidnapped or before you get cancer or before you lose your wife I just do it before uh, you, you fall down and, and yeah maybe yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's also about male energy I don't know it's a bit of a political incorrect theme but but yeah you also have to follow follow nature sometimes and and, and follow biology and and yeah, feel well, you know, strong. It's, it's, it's interesting you say that because, you know, the uh, testosterone level of men is now at the lowest it's ever been in the history of man. Yeah, but you can <laughs> see I'm, I'm bald. I'm bald. Well, you know, um, being bald is a sign of high testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the opposite. Yeah, but it's, it's the lowest now that it's ever been in general because of yeah, the I understood. intelligence, chemicals and food. So, uh, you know, if you're not aware of that, I think as a man to add on and, and make sure that you're challenging yourself. Uh, and, I, and I wouldn't want to say as a man, because women can challenge themselves no, too, in, 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 in the same manner. But if you're not challenging yourself on an individual level, like trying to step your game up, whether it be physically, mentally or whatever, you know, you lose but in, in nature because people are just competitive by nature. And if you're not, yeah, true. I tell people this all the time with weights. There's no such thing as maintenance. You're either getting weaker or you're getting stronger. Yeah. Cannot maintain. Like, oh, I just want to get work out for two weeks and then I want to maintain. It doesn't work like that. You're either getting better or worse. Yeah. And, and especially if you get older. Yeah. As you get older, you have to train harder just to maintain. Yeah. True. <laughs> so, you know. That's why I'm glad I met you. Uh, you yeah, yeah. So we can yeah. ask sometimes. And then, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing anthropology wise now? Are you, are you, are you using that anymore? Or, or, no, uh, I, my, my work is about giving lectures about how people can yeah, develop themselves, e either mentally and by, by getting into challenges that you really have to find out yourself to, to, to and also how to deal with other people. Because most of the time we don't connect on a proper level with people. We either want to use them or we want to help them. But it's really important that you're really interested and that you're 
feeling some kind of un unconditional love that you don't want to grab things from other people or that you want to give too much but that it's on an equal level that you really take the time and the interest to understand each other and then if we if we take time for each other then we can um, find find out that we are all human beings and and sometimes we want to dehumanize our opponents or people that we don't like and we try to find things that yeah that they, they don't count for, as a human being but we are all human beings and i think that's really important and if we all know about our wishes our goals our dreams and we help each other to yeah to, to get those dreams then, then i think we'll create a better world and freedom because i know what the lack of freedom is i think freedom is really a the engine or the power for creativity for new things for development because otherwise you block yourself you take yourself hostage even in free life how many people are in a wrong situation with the wrong partner the, the wrong body maybe too too thin or too weak or too fat um, financial situations can take us uh, into yeah into a hostage situation sickness uh, yeah covid yeah. politics there's so many things that take away our freedom and i think we should care more about our freedom so that's uh, the, the 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 lessons i try to tell other people that's that's awesome. I wanted to ask you, uh, as a parent myself, how how's your experience influenced your uh, parenting? Yeah, I, um, of course. First of all, I try to be sweet, uh, but it doesn't <laughs> work all the time. Eh? When I'm yeah, yeah. tired, I'm also less sweet and, and nice than when I'm not tired. Um, but I, I try really to 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 support them in being curious about life and trying to find out new things and to broaden their horizon. And that it's okay to make mistakes and because sometimes people don't want to make mistakes but if you don't fall yeah you don't learn anything so of course it's difficult to get people out of their TikTok and out of their games right right get them onto the streets but yeah i'm managing more or less uh, okay of course I, I wish i could do better but uh, yeah, they also have their own mind and their own. Uh, right. And their own interests. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting yeah. with the kids these days, you know, they're yeah. very much, but they're very much, I find that they're wellness orientated inherently. They're like, I'm not doing something that doesn't give me gratification. That doesn't feel good. I'm not just doing something for money. It has to have something It has to resonate with me other than, other than money. So, you know, I think in, in a way they're a lot more advanced than certainly I was uh, growing True, up. But, but, but my yeah, kids are still a bit small. And right. Yeah, so they're quite. Uh, yeah, if, if it doesn't bring me anything, I don't do it. So so oh, now now with this Ukraine stuff and between Ukraine and and Russia, my my middle, my young, the youngest one is not too much interested. But the the, the, the second one, she's ten years old now, and she really she baked some cookies. She went around with the neighbors to collect money, and she gave it to the refugees. So that was definitely cool. I would have never done that when I was 10, for sure. I would yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're a lot more advanced. Yeah, they're a lot yeah. more socially conscious of what's going on. I, I do see that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's cool. That's cool. So um, let's talk about your organization now, what you're doing with uh, uh, prostitution now and uh, getting get yeah. up the street. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, it's called Free a Girl. If you go to freeagirl.com, and we also are starting our organization in, in the USA, there's about 1 million kids being kidnapped and being taken away from their families and then they end up in the in the worst places in the world where they can, could be it's like minor girls ending up in in brothels in hotels in basements and and they are yeah ex exploded and, and and they have to yeah sell their bodies and they're really taken into captivity to earn back the money being paid by by yeah, pimps to to sell them from the market so it's really a modern way of slavery that they are really exploded and sometimes they end up dead because of all kind of you know, diseases or that are useless in, in the eyes of, 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 of the beholders. And uh, yeah, we together with informants, we go to these places, we, we identify them then together with police departments, or like in India, in Thailand, but also in Brazil, we, we, we free them and, and yeah, we give them a second life. And, and the reason why I started it together with my colleague is for, I was waiting for 20 months to get out and I was really crying as, a, as an adult person and thinking, why isn't anyone helping me? How come my, my agency, my family isn't helping me? How come my government isn't helping me? But at the end, they really did their best to get me out. My parents told me, we did everything to get you out. We didn't want to 
we didn't want you to die or coming back and wondering, did we do enough to get my son out? And those families in India from poor, poor areas, they don't have the connections, they don't have the money to buy or to, to hire people to, to, to get the, their family members out. And that's why we, yeah, we got in and, and we support those families to yeah, get their children that's back because they want to be re, re, yeah, reunited and, and, and live yeah, a new life. We, we give them like a second life. I was myself, I was uh, released on, on Christmas, now on Easter Day, uh, wow. the, the, the resurrection of Jesus. I had a big beard. I came, from, <laughs> yeah, I came from under the ground from my grave because it felt yeah. like I was yeah, buried alive. And then, yeah, th this feeling inspired me also to, to give other people back their life or a second chance. Wow. Yeah. That's that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, and for now we 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 we, we freed more than five thousand girls. So it's really a huge wow. quantity. Yeah. Much respect. Much respect. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, what 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 what's what's your top three tips you can give to people right now who are going through some hard shit? You know, they feel like they're alone. They they by themselves, just like you were for twenty months. You yeah. know, you're held captive by this situation, or think they're held captive because it's in your mind, right? It's the mind. Oh, state. true, true. But anyway, if you feel pain or misery. It's okay to feel miserable. Right? Don't feel miserable about you feeling miserable. Right? Because lots of people feel sorry about themselves that they feel bad. But for a moment, it's okay to feel miserable. But then really start to look uh, into your life. Like, I'm more than just the miserable period I have in my life. Right? And, and try to be happy. Try to feel the good moments. Uh, that That even though while you're feeling miserable, there's still happiness around you. So that's, it's a bit of a long one, but that's number one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Number two. Number two is there's always people around you that, that can help you, that want to help you. So that's a simple one. Just go out, look for someone, uh, just knock on the door of your neighbor or your family member or whoever, your old teacher. You, they Almost no one says no to you when you come out for help. That's true. That's yeah. True. So it's also very simple. And then the third one is make yourself stronger. Really, either physically or mental, there's always ways to make yourself stronger. So do it. Don't wait. Get a book. Get an exercise. Hire a personal trainer. Um, yeah, yeah, but no, <laughs> so don't wait. Don't wait. Yeah, stay yeah. stay present, be in the now, and and take action. I, yeah, I definitely, definitely agree with and, that. And everyone will tell you, but but it's true. It's 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 like like what I learned. If you shorten the period bet between thinking and doing, it helps you very very much. And because we, yeah, we always postpone things or or many times. So shorten the period between thinking and doing. That's a good one. That's really yeah. a good one. That might be number four. Okay, the book. Hell hostage. I got my copy. I didn't get my autograph though. I'm oh, sure. I will come back. <laughs> well, I'll be back. I'll be back to get the. Uh, I'll be back in six weeks, as a matter of fact, to get okay. my. Cool. To get my uh, cool. autograph, definitely. But fam, check out the book Hell Hostage. If people want to get at you, ask you some questions. Uh, yeah, get, definitely. Get Feel free. Mentor. Give me your. Uh, give me your website. All your information. Everything right now. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I have to spell it, but it's uh, Ar Arian Erko. It's A R J. A N uh, E R K E L dot com, which is quite easy, but I, I, I guess you will write it down. And the book is uh, number one bestseller on Amazon, uh, Hell wow. Hostage. So, of course, it was like two years ago. But no, uh, that's crazy. That's I crazy. The, the stamp on the on, on the cover. Congratulations! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is awesome. And what about uh, IG or um, Facebook? Yeah, it's just my name. So R R R Jan Erkel, uh, A R D A N E R K E L. Um, yeah, just look for a kidnapped person, the Netherlands. That's easier because my name is very difficult for you. <laughs> and you come right up, right? Kidnap Netherlands. And, and yeah, uh, you, uh, you pop right up. Um, yeah. what, what are your future plans? What do you, what do you see yourself doing the next four or five years? What, what do you got? Yeah, to do? I want to uh, also go abroad. So right now I'm I'm I'm, I'm quite uh, yeah I, I give like 100 150 lectures in the Netherlands so so that's quite a good job but but I think there's a 
broader world waiting for stories like me to inspire people. So I want to go uh, yeah, to the USA. You're making the step towards the Netherlands. I, I, I want to yeah, go. Yeah, we're going opposite directions. I'm headed to Europe. You're headed to the States. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we want our organization, the Free Your Girl USA, to grow. We just started. Uh, we found the first uh, founders. We found uh, some sponsors. But yeah, there's also lots of uh, charities in, and there's lots of... Um, yeah, philanthropic people, how you call it. Um, so, so we think, yeah, we, we can also grow there so that together with all the efforts we are doing, all the support we're getting, that we can free many more girls because, yeah, modern slavery, it, it has to stop definitely. Yeah. And, and especially if you can, I can do, man, uh, let yeah. me know if there's any way I can help. Yeah. You know, fitness. No, I, I wanted to ask you because you, you have all the, yeah, you train lots of uh, well known, <laughs> famous people. Maybe you can, yeah, get get the bridge between them and us. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. definitely talk about it. I'll be back in six weeks. Let's definitely do a meeting. Any, any way I can assist you. I, I yeah, we'll be cool. We'll be cool. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, Good. you're welcome. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Wonderful to see you it. again. And, and, and fam, I really listened to this and uh, pay attention to the tips he gave you because it's from someone who actually lived the experience and a lot of times we listen to this self-help stuff and we're like oh where's this person coming from well they're a trust fund kid what did they go through they're not going through the same situation i'm going through it doesn't really get as bad as what you went through and you overcame it you're definitely an inspiration and uh thank you for coming yeah. on appreciate it thank you mark thank you very much is brought to you by WinCheck Studios. We are an all-in-one educational platform for podcasters that revolutionizes how hosts leverage content to increase engagement with listeners, downloads, and income. We come together to focus on community, collaboration, and collective impact. For more information on how you can interact directly with our hosts, access exclusive live content with offers you can't get anywhere else from our official partners, join our purpose-driven community by visiting www.winject.com. If you're ready to build a career doing what you love, then we're ready to see you there.